All right, y'all, we are here with a whole new crop of hoes, okay? I want to let y'all know, this little comb right here is going to be my, it's going to be in, what's the word I'm trying to look for? It's going to be in substitution of me using my hands a whole lot, even though I'm probably still going to use my hands a whole lot. But anyway, so, we are here, like I said, with a whole new crop of hoes. Wait, I feel like, is it just me, y'all, or am I, like, off-center? Hold on. I feel like I'm off-center. My main problem in this damn room is always trying to get my soul center. Good enough. Y'all get it. Y'all get it, right? Y'all get it. Okay. Anyway. So. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So, I be, I did want to review this because it did seem interesting. A lot of it's revolving. Well, it's not revolving around the Mormon church. But a lot of these hoes is Mormon. Um, Not that they practice any Mormon traditions or values, seems like. But it seems interesting enough. Um... Salt Lake City. Okay, Salt Lake City, which I believe is in Colorado, is a place, randomly enough, I've always wanted to live there. The only reason I've never moved there is because I know it's just a whole bunch of white people, but I've always wanted to live there. Like, now granted, I am not the biggest fan of the cold, but for some reason, Salt Lake City has always just seemed like a beautiful place to live. And even looking at all of the, like, footage and stuff of, like, the mountains, it just seems like a serene, beautiful place to live. But it's very, very white, you know? So okay anyway i'm sorry i said colorado i meant utah sorry wait hold on utah my bad i said colorado i meant utah but i did always want to live into south lake city because of how beautiful it is the mountains all of that other stuff always wanted to move there sorry for the for the for the misspeaking but anyway so let's get to the shits okay so we're gonna go through the order that everything happened but don't worry i'll talk about each person in in particular so again they kind of start off talking about you know how salt lake city is a very 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 mormon ass fucking place utah in general is a mormon ass place um i think that's where my best friend's like boyfriend is going for work like for like the next month or so and i said to him oh so you're going to mormon country because that's pretty much what utah is about a mormon country right okay so let's start off with Jen. Now, in the little, you know, how they get their little taglines, she calls herself like the queen bee. And you can obviously tell that that's the role that she's going to take. She's going to take the more so Nene role, the more I'm the head bitch, I'm that bitch type of woman, you know, throughout this whole thing. Okay, so we start off with Jen, right? Me and her. First of all, her house, all of their houses are fucking beautiful. All of their houses is like, a cabin room like her house is so big and it's so damn beautiful the woodwork it's everything okay and we come to find out that she has hold on y'all i'm sorry y'all but yeah her house is freaking beautiful okay um she has a blackity black husband okay she is originally from hawaii but she moved you're gonna have to wait for this you have to wait um she is from hawaii but she lives in colorado or whatever the case may be um and she is what is she what does she say she is she's like hawaiian she's like part asian and a part a couple other things but of course in colorado she's black and like you said why because they ignorant and they don't they don't know no better you get a little it's the one drop rule pretty much that applies like in america you know what i mean like you know you got a little bit of color in you you're black that's just how america works anyway um, her husband is the football coach at the University of Utah, so you know he makes good fucking money, okay? They have two sons. One of their sons is getting ready, he's very handsome, is getting ready to get into medical school. You know, they was talking about him getting a job, like he needs to get a job. And, you know, Jen is like, no, because I want him to focus on getting in school. Which in our reality, that's really, it really should be that way. That you should, um, like, if your kids is like going to college, you should be able to afford them the opportunity to go to school without having to worry about everything else but i understand you know wanting him to work and get some type of work work ethic um but that's gonna be for medical school oh he gonna get that work ethic because uh them um them residencies ain't a joke at all um so also about jen so jen was jen mormon i don't remember i think jen was mormon or she had like she was like tiddling tiddling and you know with um mormonism or whatever right but her husband is muslim 
And so when she, you know, asked him maybe like seven years into the marriage about converting to Mormon, you know, to being a Mormon, he was like, absolutely not. Why would I ever become a Mormon when they just started accepting black people in 1970 something? And the first thing that I thought about when she said that is, I don't know if any of y'all watch Love After Lockup, but if y'all do, um, Andrea and... Damn, I can't think of the guy's name, but but the other guy, Andrea and the other guy, you know, and her husband or whatever, you know, she's from Mormon country and she tried to convert him. And I remember she had brought him to come visit visit her old town and they was all sitting at the table. It was like a whole bunch of white people at the table sitting there. He's at the head and they tried to convince him why he should be a Mormon. And he made a good point. Like he said, he said, I'm sorry, but y'all didn't even accept black people until 1970 something. So do you really think that I think this is a religion for me? Absolutely, absolutely not absolutely not and i feel him on that i feel them on that but i guess she was like oh well you know i never thought about it that way so you know what i guess she said she was just gonna convert over to muslim or whatever um i'm not saying this for her i just feel like i wish people took that type of stuff more seriously like as far as converting because a lot of the women on here just sounded like okay well i just did this okay well i just did that like and religion is not nothing to be played with that's just my opinion anyway then we got Heather, okay? Heather is the one I kind of like the most so far, okay? Heather and Whitney, I like them two a lot. Um, She has been living there since she was 15. She has, like, I think it's like a beauty lab or whatever where she, like, gives Botox and stuff. I love how they showed the sign that said 15-minute parking for Botox. I said, so that's all it take? That's all y'all say? Oh, I guess so. Anyway, so she has daughters, one that's 16, one that's 13, and... I want to talk about this part. She talked about how every descendant in her family pretty much was like a Mormon and how they had came out there and settled and stuff. But she's not the first person to say that. A lot of the women out here talk about how they are like straight descendants from Mormons, like how their people moved out here and settled here. And all that just made me think is, that's amazing that like y'all, and when I mean y'all, I mean mostly like white people, y'all can really go that far back in y'all history and figure out and know for certain like i have like my great 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 unfortunately black people we don't have that fucking luxury and that's all it made me think of like i wish that i knew you know past like my great grandmother no my great great grandmother um i don't really know much about that i know my great grandmother's grandmother was a slave but i don't know anything past that that makes me kind of sad um but yeah but she talked about pretty much how her husband you know she married into money because her husband i don't know family is some line descendant of mormons and how they're worth billions i said yes ma'am but none of that matters because she got a divorce five years ago well i'm like well sis at least you know you i'm pretty sure you got a nice little settlement you know your kids is taken care of you did what you had to do um now, this part I did find interesting. Now, remember I just said about the whole thing about black people and not accepting them to 1973. But she was saying how she likes pretty much everything that does not align with, like, she said she's like rap music. She likes um, gays. She likes black men. And she said all the things that don't align with Mormon values. That made me chuckle, but it made me sad out the Mormon because at least she fucking knows. Like, yeah, y'all accept black people now. But she, but to me, all of that, what her, her saying that to me makes it seem, I mean, confirms the fact that yeah y'all like black people in there but y'all don't really like black people like like let's be real mormons do not like black people y'all don't so it just is what it is okay <clears throat> then we move on to meredith okay meredith which one is meredith meredith is the one that looks like lisa so i'm gonna get those two confused a lot meredith and lisa if lisa's hair was the set was the exact same color as meredith hers is maybe a tad bit lighter i would not be able to tell like the difference between them and they brought that up but anyway meredith um i don't know how old she is but she got a son a son named brooks who's 21 clearly he's a gay young man that's fine he gives me life i like him a lot her husband seth they moved there seven years ago but they only lived there part-time they're originally from chicago from chicago shout out to ashley miller okay they've been married 24 years have two kids and right now seth lives in chicago because he's doing you know his business stuff and i guess meredith her business is like making custom jewelry you know she says she made the first white woman she said i didn't know who she was but then she said scarlett johansson i like her and then she said rihanna of course rihanna's rihanna and um i'm sorry i didn't even really say what i thought about everybody um like i said jen i think is like the queen bee heather to me seems you know pretty pretty, pretty even kill which is why i like her <sighs> meredith comes off meredith she's not as bad 
as like Lisa, but she's like right underneath there. Like, I don't know. She just has like a certain like air about her. Like somewhat she do kind of feel like she's better than you a little bit. It comes off like that sometimes. Anyway. Then we move over to Lisa. And like I put here, her her house is beautiful too. Like everybody's house is like a cabin fucking room. Beautiful, okay? She's originally from New York. She's Jewish by um by you know culture, by heritage, but she's Mormon by choice. John is her husband. They have been married for 16 years and they have two young boys. I think it was six and seven. Now she owns a luxury marketing um company so that's why i'm not gonna go in on her because um huh. so i just want to let you know you know i have you know i went to school for marketing you know i got my master's of marketing so you feel me if you want to hit me up you know i could put everything i feel about you i could put that to the side if we could get to this bread you feel me so somebody let uh somebody let lisa know okay and she also owns her own alcohol brand her and her husband do like all of this different type of tequila which again <laughs> Like I said before, so clearly y'all Mormons, but y'all don't really live by Mormon values because just because you don't drink, but you still sell it. So I guess that's how she probably rational rationalized it in her head. Um, I do like the fact that she, <laughs> I thought the most like relatable moment is when they was all in the car, right? And they went to go get like some Taco Bell. I said, look at y'all rich ass people in this Porsche getting some fucking Taco Bell. But what she said, she was like, I'm gonna be real. I'm not like a little mama who be like running around and cooking and doing, I don't do all of that. I don't do it. I'm like, this is why we're here. You know what, Lisa? I don't care for you too much because of your attitude towards the end, but we're here on that. Cause see, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be your traditional housewife either. All up in here cooking and cleaning. I ain't going to be doing that. I ain't, I ain't got time for all that. Um, cleaning, yes. Cooking, probably not. So that's almost everyone. That's almost everyone. So then we, so we go over and we see Jen goes to see Heather. You know, she talks about, Heather must really love rap. Because even Jen said the first time we met her, she was a rapper too. What kind of rappers do you like? That's what I need to know, Heather. Who's your favorite? Um, she wanted, Jen talks about how she wants to throw, um, Meredith um a birthday party or whatever um but she even said like before she threw it that like it's gonna be for Meredith but it's gonna kind of be for me and I think that that's just extremely like fucked up and selfish and we're gonna get to the party but don't do some shit like that if you're telling me that you're throwing an event or a party for me that means it's for me that doesn't mean that it's for you and for you to have the spotlight because that's not what it's about at all so then we meet Whitney. I think Whitney might be my favorite person so far. I just like, I like everything about her. I like her style. I like her attitude. I like her personality. I like everything about her. So Whitney, when we see Whitney, she is, you know, she's getting ready and it says her wedding day. So I'm like, oh, okay, so sis is getting married. No, she's, re she's renewing her vows after 10 years of being married. Um, no shade, Whitney. They said that that, that, that wedding dress cost like $6,000 and it was custom made. It looked like a regular ass dress off the rack to me, to me. Um, so yeah, so when I first when she got down the aisle and I see him, I'm like, oh, he's much older than her. She's eight his her husband is 18 years older than her. And the way that they got together is that they pretty much they both worked in the same office. They pretty much had an office affair. She was married, he was married, they, you know, typical. I don't even know if he was her boss and she was a secretary. I don't want to be rude and put that type of label on her, but that's what it gives me. And you know, they end up staying together and getting the divorce from the people that they was with. And because of that, you know, in the Mormon community, they don't really do divorce. They were both excommunicated from the Mormon church altogether because of that. I could go on a whole long tangent, but I'm not here to go on, on religion. Don't got time for that. Um, but you know, she, they get their vows renewed, you know, and thankfully there was a lot of people there versus the first time, you know, um, I could, I get why she said she was a little bit upset, but I can understand why people would not want to support something like that. Like in the beginning, like you guys cheated, come on, you guys cheated on your respective wife and husband to get together. That's kind of like, um, damn it, what is the girl's, the country singers, the country singers that, um, what's the name's ex-husband on the Real House of Beverly Hills who cheated on her, um, you know, with the other country star, they, both of the country stars cheated on they respective partners and then end up getting together it's like that type of shit nobody nobody want to hear that shit so lisa then i mean sorry meredith jen i don't know jen lisa and meredith all meet up together i forgot who house it was it doesn't matter but they're sitting there having a conversation and um I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the names together, I'm trying to remember. Jen is explaining to them how she's going to throw a party and all this stuff like that for Meredith. I mean, how she's going to 
throw a party like i said yeah for meredith um and you know how she's gonna invite this person that person and how she said how she had just met up with heather and she didn't realize that lisa and heather had went to school together college together and knew each other for 20 years and they kind of show a flashback you know of Heather talking about, you know, how they've known each other, how she's such a nice person, this is that and the third. And Lisa pretty much tries to make it, this is where Lisa to me, like, kind of lost me. Okay, at first she was like, oh, I don't really know her, I'm not really sure who that is. But then you said, I do kind of know of her because they used to say that she was, like, saying fuck the honor code and she used to just have, woo, do whatever. So it's like, which one is it? Now, did not, did, this, this is what, this is the difference. This is what I need people to start, like, being honest about. It's a difference between not being friends, friends with somebody and then not knowing them. Now, you can say that, um, I'm sorry, y'all, somebody's calling me. Y'all can say, you can say that, yeah, I know of Heather. We did go to school together. We kind of talked every now and again, but me and her, you know, we weren't super, super, super close. There's nothing wrong with saying that. But for you to try to be like, oh, I don't really know who that is, but I do know. Like, girl, stop playing. Stop, stop with the bullshit. So then we have Mary, who is the black woman on the show, and she ends up meeting up with Heather or whatever. You know, she talks about how she doesn't have any filter and, um... Was it Heather that she met up with? No, she met up with Whitney. That's who it was. Let me fix my notes. She met up with Whitney. That's who it was. And, you know, she doesn't really have any stereotype. I mean, she doesn't have, like, a, a, a filter or anything. Um, Whitney says pretty much how everybody knows about Mary because Mary married her step-grandfather. And she explains, you know, with him on screen that it was kind of an arranged thing, you know. And my grandma's will, my grandma Will's pretty much said that, like, if she's gone, then she needs somebody to take care of him. Okay. You know that you don't have to marry him for you to take care of him. I'm wondering, is it less of a, um, you need to take care of him and more of a, like, a money thing? Is it more so to keep the money flowing throughout the family? Like, what does he bring in, like, as far as, like, money-wise? Because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that you would have to marry your step-grandfather to make sure that he's taken care of. My sister right now is taking care of my grandma, but she's not married to her. She's just living there taking care of her. It's very confusing to me um yeah it, it, that's very that's very 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 weird so when she says step-grandfather I take that as being it's not like her mom like you know your girl it's not one it's the the guy that she's married to is not actually any of her parents father this is the man that you know that her grandmother must have married after she had whoever like which one of her parents or whatever it's still weird it's inappropriate it's gross I don't want to hear about it anymore I really don't want to hear about it anymore um, she's not Mormon. She's Pentecostal. I said, oh, here we go. Nothing against people that's, that, you know, that goes Pentecostal, Pentecostal to church, but personally, I just feel like people do a lot, whatever, I'm not going to go in. And she's a first lady here. So, then we meet up, um, uh, oh, sorry, Mary, I mean, Whitney gets a text from Jen pretty much saying how she's going to throw, like, the party to Meredith and stuff, and she's like, oh, my bad, she, um, Mary goes, oh, I know I'm not invited because I guess her and Jen must have fell out because Mary said that Jen smells like a hospital and she has a bad thing on hospitals or whatever. But we fast, we switch over to Jen and Jen is saying, yeah, I did smell like a hospital because I was in a hospital all week because my aunt, who's like my mother, got both of her legs amputated. I'm like, well, that's kind of fucked up to say to Mary. That's fucked up. And she says she knew that. So that's even more fucked up. Um... I have this here. Jen has like 15 assistants. Every time a different person, it was like her assistant, right? Which is like Steve, I think the main one. Then she called some girl and it said her second assistant. Then when Heather came up to the house to come, you know, before the party started, and some guy was like, oh, do you need help? She said, yeah. She said that was her third assistant. She's got like 15 assistants. God bless her heart. But shout out to those people making that money, okay? When Heather comes over, like I said, to Jen's house, you know, before the party, you know, Jen tells Heather, you know, that Lisa says she don't really know you and you was just like a woo type girl. And she was like, well, first of all, you know, according to Heather, she said that Lisa has said that multiple times. Oh, you're like a sister to me. You're like this. So clearly they had more than a passing type of relationship. It was more, it might have not been, this is what I'm thinking. They're probably not as close 
in Lisa's mind, Heather and Heather are not as close as Heather thinks, but if y'all had multiple conversations since y'all graduated college, there is no point in you saying that you don't really know her. You can say we're not best friends, but she's cool people. She's an acquaintance, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, Heather, of course, has asked you. She was like, girl, first of all, for me to even go to that school, I have to sign the honor code. And for her to try to say that I just do that out of the window, it's kind of like I wouldn't have even been at that school if that was the case. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have been there and I wouldn't be divorced and all this other stuff. And Heather made a good point. Like, bitch, I wish I was the type of girl in college that was just doing whatever. Me too, sis. Me too. Okay? So then you get to the party. Now, with, now Jen told everybody that this party was going to be a cute little cocktail party meanwhile she trying to make a whole met gala at her house lord help us so the party comes everything looked i mean i think everything looked good on the inside i personally did not like the draping that was in the tunnel i don't know i did i just didn't i think i didn't like the fabric like i didn't like that part but everything else was really 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 nice um so everybody's coming to the party Whitney looked so okay. Let me tell you something. The rest of y'all hoes did all the most, all of the glitter and the feathers. Whitney came in a simple black dress with the um, with like the sleeves right there and the cut off here, hair going straight back, and she looked better than all y'all, in my opinion. Whitney killed her look as soon as I seen that. I said, My god, yes, Whitney, yes, Whitney. The hair, the makeup, the earrings the outfit the shoes you won that battle tonight you looked a fucking lady and it was simple but sleek but come on give me project runway Heidi Klum type vibes like that's what she was giving me here for it here for her okay um I also have here because at this point everybody's moving around and also I have like little notes here you can tell when a black woman only really hangs out around white women because of her weave Mary that weave is unacceptable especially the way it looked at that party unacceptable unacceptable i don't give a fuck who you got on valentino valentina dolce and gabane i don't care who you got on the hair the weave looked a mess it looked undone it looked unkept it looked like you just grabbed it off of the person the wig little stand you just threw it on you braided it to the side and you just went or it looked like you braided it up before you went to sleep and you just got up and was like let me just time brush it out a mess with me and i seen your hair or what, watch what happens live it looks a mess like she needs a better like wig or weave it's bad like i don't know it's the way that it sits it doesn't sit right it does not sit right it bothers me okay and so like i said so you know um what was her name meredith when she comes home she sees you know that her husband had like ordered for all of these flowers to be all over the place even though he's not there i'm sorry you could tell that she was a little bit annoyed because i would have been annoyed too i would have been like what the fuck like it's flowers everywhere all over the place it's cute but if i'm not getting my back blown out in the middle of this to me this is like it's kind of like pointless like you could have just got me a whole bunch of roses that were actually in vases that i don't have to clean the fuck up later and again the thought counts but i really didn't get i didn't get all of that i didn't get it and i think she didn't get it either but anyway, when she was on the way to the party, she already knew. When she walked in, and you walk in, like, on a little step and repeat, and it says, like, Shaw, Chalet, or whatever, she's like, I knew this wasn't about me. I knew she was going to say that it was, but I know Jen told me this wasn't going to be about me. And I just want to say, throughout this party, Jen, you're rude as fuck, because if you wanted to have a party for yourself, you could have just did that. Like, you're a grown-ass woman. From what I heard, didn't you say you throw parties all the time? You could have threw a party just to throw a party for yourself. But it's fucked up that you ha you hit it under the guise of, let me throw you a birthday party and then make it all about you. That little flower thing in the front should have said, happy birthday Meredith. That's what it should have said. It shouldn't have said anything about your little shopping. And then, and then you decide to make a grand entrance. Now when Meredith comes in, you decide to make a grand entrance. No, what you should have did was have one of your 20 fucking assistants waiting at the door for her or waiting for her to like pull up or whatever. And then the minute that they pulled up, you should have had everybody waiting at the door to greet her when she came in. But no, 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 no. You got to do the most and you got to come in and make a grand entrance. And then you, then she ordered like some little, some little, you know, hula dancers or whatever the case may be. I think she called them children dancers or whatever. And even the producers was like, what does that have to do with Meredith? Oh, no, that has nothing to do with her. It has everything to do with me. Selfish, selfish, selfish. I can't be friends with somebody like that. It's very fucking annoying. Um, 
then you know heather is in the party and she's talking to i don't remember who she talked to but she pretty much was saying how you know she hasn't talked to lisa and how she feels like at the end of the day lisa thinks that she's better than her i i i, I agree it feels like that. i know this is only the first episode but it does give off those vibes when she was talking to heather was talking to somebody and lisa like just so happened like was walking away when she was like coming over to talk and then heather bent over like this to say hi to her you know she looked like she was gonna get for her and she was like yeah and then kept walking lisa let me tell you something like she said with your little fake little fur thinking you denzel washington an american gangster sitting in the front row at the boxing match the same boxing match that got him to go to jail but all i got to say you are nobody lisa i don't know and and even jen said that when she first met lisa that it was she gave very like stuff of like i just the celebrities girl don't nobody give a fuck don't nobody fucking care you need to bring that down bring it down a couple fucking notches because let's be real that this is the thing that bothers me the most you know of course you're going to be popping where you are but if you take that same lisa and you pluck her ass out of salt lake city and you drop her in beverly hills you drop her in la you drop her in new york that's where the real money is and that's what really be making you mad it's not that you don't have money but if you really want to play those games let's call one of the girls from new york let's call one of the girls from beverly hills and let's let let's see what you really working with let's see how much money you really got let's see what type of influence that you really have compared to the other girls because you don't because you don't sis you don't and that's probably why you on this show to get more of that so then Mary and Jen sit down and they have a conversation. And Jen, I just feel like in this whole conversation, Jen just wanted an apology, which I feel like she deserved, especially if you know what's going on. And Mary was just rude as fuck. Like, even all of the shit that she was saying in her confessional, like, oh, well, who gets their legs amputated at 60? Like, clearly she didn't eat well. I mean, drink water. See, things like that is what get hands and feet put on you. Now, when the reunion do come and they play that back, I hope that Jen hops across whatever couch she's on. Probably she's probably going to be sitting next to Andy. Hops across Andy and boot bops you upside your head. She was about to snap when she was saying all that stuff when she was sitting on the couch. Like, don't fucking talk about my family. All Mary had to do was apologize. And what was confusing is that at first, okay, you had been admitted it that you said it, right? But then you was sitting in front of Jen. You just have to say like, oh, I said that. I said that. I said that. Then you called her friend over. And when her friend was like, yeah, you said that. Here you go. Oh, yeah, I did say that. So what the fuck was the point of calling her friend over to ask her, oh, well, why did you tell her that? Like she said, that's my best friend. You think I'm not going to tell her that she was talking shit about her? Get it real, Mary. And Mary, you looked a mess. I don't give a fuck what kind of dress that was. I don't care who runway it was off of. It looked a fucking mess. But in general, I liked that episode. I thought the episode was cute. I thought it was entertaining. I think it's a good, it was a good way to, you know, set the foundation of the fuckery that we're about to get into here for this season. I'm very interested. I will be back every week to review, get in the comments. And I'll bye.